Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, we get to speak with Doc Williams. He is a personal problem solver and the CEO and founder at Brand Factory Inc. He helps influencers and brands leverage their content to make an impact in their industry. He delivers the best results by working with brands with a specific service or product, but need to figure out how to create a story for the launch. In his process, he combines thorough market research, customer research, offers creation, online sales funnel building, paid and organic traffic strategies to build a complete blueprint for a revamped product launch. His secret sauce focuses on your unfair advantage, your unique skill, story, or experience that will help you create the product you and your customers will love. I'm so excited to bring him to the podcast and discover the high quality services he could offer. Doc, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. Definitely. And thank you so much for having me. What's really funny is that anytime I say Doc, it reminds me of Back to the Future. Hey, Doc. I don't know if you get that at all. Oh, yeah. Oh, please. I, oh, please. Back to the Future. I love that. Love all of them, even part three. I don't care what people say. <laughs> um, no, no, I love it. I love it, man. And I used to have long hair. So when it used to be out, there you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, nice. So, Doc, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I read that you've been in the technology space in the digital marketing industry. Tell us a little bit about, tell, tell us a little bit of your journey on how you got started. You know, um, <laughs> it kind of is just windy. I guess it's everyone, right? It's just never something straightforward. Yeah. Um, actually, I was really bad at technology for a long time. I, I thought I was going to go into it straight from high school. And I thought I was going to be a programmer and all these things. And uh, I just turned out to be terrible at all of it. <laughs> and, uh, and I just liked business. But I was like, mm. that was at the time where like C++ was really big. And it just got started. Dreamweaver had just come out and oh. uh, and it was just like I had a GeoCities page and I'm like, I'm going to be killing it. And I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> and so I pivoted and I went into healthcare instead for about uh, six years or so. And so I was in healthcare. Um, I was a physical therapist assistant. I was a massage therapist. And uh, I kind of went back into marketing when I opened my own gym. Um, you know, in pivoting from healthcare. So it, it was a windy road, but that's how I ended up in digital marketing. But it makes a lot of sense because when you have your own gym, like who's going to market for me? I don't want to pay somebody else. Let me just jump right into it. And then what's really cool about what you mentioned is now you have a niche already. Like you don't even have to go through that process of doing the exercise. What's my niche? Who's my audience? I have a gym. I need people. Get yeah, it was, it was right there for me. I was like, I just, I need to pay rent. I need to, I need to have these members. And that's exactly what you said. Like, I remember when I first opened my gym and my friend, this was, you know, probably like 20, this was 2011, something like this. Mm -hmm. And my friend was like, listen, there's this guy named Noah Kagan. He does this stuff. He's like, and I know this wrestler from high, from college. He has these potato guns and all of this stuff. And like, He's doing something about some kind of selling online, like this click funnels. And I was like, ah, whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, from there, it kind of just, um, yeah, it kind of all went from that path and trying to figure out like opt-ins and all of these pages. And it, mind you, like I was terrible at WordPress, like my first site, my friend got me into like WordPress. He signed up for my first, you know, he signed me. He made my first domain in hosting, but I didn't yeah. understand it, got locked out, didn't know where anything was, didn't understand it. So it was a trial by fire. Well, that, those are the best kind of ways because you have an intention of figuring it out. Like, okay, because when you're handed something, you're like, all right, I'll do it tomorrow. 
But when you have a specific need, like I got to get this done, dude, I'm going to look at all the YouTube videos. I'm going to watch everything available. And that's the power of the internet. Like these days, everything is available. Like people are teaching about SEO and algorithms and stuff like that on TikTok. I'm like, <laughs> It's it's like this is what oh my goodness I just had to go on this small rant for a second like so my um my wife's little cousin like messages me and he's obsessed with Doctor Who and he wants me to build him this thing and I was like bro like why don't you go on YouTube and make this he's like oh I just don't have the specs I'm like you are living in the best time of like human history of like with technology and understanding things I was like stop being lazy. And so he's just like, I need you to build a dock. I'm just like, oh my God, I had to block them. And it's just, I just, it, it's all there. So exactly what you were saying. It's, it was at that point, like um, digital courses were just kind of getting started. Um, people were really trying to go in depth. And uh, from there, I pretty much kind of just weaved through what I wanted to learn, what mm. was interesting to me. And uh, I was always interested in creating really quick, like minimal viable products, creating MVPs, creating just just seeing if things were going to work. And uh, it was at the time where so many SaaS companies were coming up, uh, software as a service companies were coming up, so I could experiment and do those kind of things. So, yep, that's that's how I started. Dude, that's that's totally totally awesome because um, that's the world I come from like when you mentioned Dreamweaver just coming up I'm like yeah I was right there <laughs> before Dreamweaver I was using front page and everything with <laughs> tables I'm like oh my god oh it was terrible it was terrible it was so terrible and then CSS1 and CSS2 I'm like what you don't need to use tables anymore You're using divs <laughs> right so it was so so crazy so I took that path and you know I was I was um still learning about marketing through like Frank Kern and Ed Dale doing the 30 day challenge. I'm like, what is this stuff? There's something called StomperNet, And, and uh, I still, I'm looking, I was looking through my hard drive the other day and I have all these tutorials on internet marketing from back then. I'm like, if I had applied any of that, like I would have been <laughs> Russell Brunson right now. You know? <laughs> I know. I know. It's crazy. But again, you know, we all uh, have, shoes to fill we have bills to pay and you know i was working for somebody else doing you know that stuff so things come up and then you know we we have I, I think it's it's automatically like we have to go through that journey to even unlock that level in our brain right you you can't really get to the princess like in in mario brothers yeah. until you play that first level it's like oh but you gotta know how the guy jumps you gotta figure out that part of stuff yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. It's, and I think that's the problem where, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it later with Vayner. A lot of people ask me like, oh, how do you work with Gary? Or like, how do you just call him and see if, and I'm just like, bro, like it doesn't work that way. Like it doesn't work that way. Like people, when I start working for ESPN, people are like, oh, you know what? You just, I want to do exactly what you did. I'm like, well, to tell the truth, I'll be honest. I was working for jobs at the time. I was working at two community colleges. I still saw patients. And I was doing this as a side hustle. Like it, it's, it, this was a hobby for a lot of years. And I used to take my breaks well, in, in between either seeing patients, I would um, work on my business in the car because I was doing home health. Or when I was teaching at a college, I would literally go into the closet and do my stuff. Or if I was interviewing people, I would interview them on like my 15 minute breaks in between classes before my next students come in, came in wow. and did that multiple years. So it just, it takes time and you just like, it takes a lot of effort. <laughs> it takes a lot. Absolutely. And, and that's what Gary keeps saying, right? You just keep doing this, this eat shit. Like yeah. <laughs> so just eat shit. Just keep doing it because four, five, six years from now, you'll have so much content that, you will be the master of it. And I love that about him. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good times. It's good times. And you know, you tell me because I, I always say this in these interviews because like there's only one person I've ever met. He's one of my, my best friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a year apart. He's the only one that's ever beaten me with how many jobs. So I've had about 47 jobs. He has about 80, he's had 83. And so that's why I'm always like, when people are like, Oh, just go through your path. I'm like, 
you got to tell me where you want to go because <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I can, I can talk about crime scene cleaning. I can talk about this. I can talk about drones. I can talk, like you just tell me where you want me to go. And yeah. And that's what it is. But I, I honestly, like every job I've had, it's been a hobby. It's been something that I'm like, Oh, I like doing this. And then my next comment is like, how can I make money off of this? And then it's kind of gone that way. I think every entrepreneur is that way. So, yeah. But um, yeah, you just tell me which direction. And I, I love going that way, man. Holy smokes, man. 47 jobs. <laughs> oh, I cannot, I cannot put my mind around it. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you know, I'm going to need some time to even think about it. I mean, I've heard about people changing jobs every, you know, three years. And that's, that's, been, that's been what I've been doing every three years. I have a different job. You know, I, I, I grew up in California. I worked there for like for the longest time, and then I moved to Colorado. Then I moved to the D, to DC, and you know, mm-hmm. but I've been in, in a longer period of time. But what you're saying is that every project is a job. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, pretty much. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, and it it just kind of fell into it. It'd be almost like. So I'll give you an example. Like uh, my videographer, me and him, we've always been like for six years, he got me on my reality show yeah. when I was younger. Like he's done everything. And so we always work together and we share an office. And like, so, you gotta, but you got you yeah. somebody. Mm-hmm. And, and the great thing is he has his own business. I have my own and we, we just collaborate and we don't have to check in with each other. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, he benefits because I work on cool stuff. I'm like, Jay, I need to look good. I need you. So it kind of works <laughs> out, but, um, you know, everything he used to do like home, um, real estate and do real estate videos and do like, you know, and he's done an HGTV like pilot. He just does all the stuff. Wow. And he's like, hey, listen, doc, like I need you to get your drone license because I'm flying all this stuff and I don't have my license. And the way you, as long as I'm on premise or I'm yeah. by him and, if you know, he goes crazy, I can grab, you know, the control that like, that's how it works. So, you know, he's like, I need you to go to school. I'm like, why don't you go to school for it? He's like, I'll pay for you. Just get your license. Like, I don't want to do the test. So I was like, all right, let's, let's just do it. So like, that's pretty much always, let, let's just see what we could do. The same friend, like he, I had my license. He's like, we're going to be, we're going to work on those, you know, those giant, um, they're on Eastern shore, but it's like the propellers, like the mm-hmm. solar energy. He's like, he's like, we're going to start doing drones. We're going to do all of this maintenance on it. And he's such the dream. Like, this is the same guy. He, um, he did his, he did, it's called the Dapper Traveler, where he would book Southeast Asia trips. This man has never left the East Coast. He refuses to fly. Like, he <laughs> hates, like, he just cringes about travel. Like, why would you do it? He's like, I saw the logo. I love the everything. And so he just makes these stupid businesses and we're always together. So, yeah, it, every hobby, it's, it's a job. It's fun. We'll see what happens. And then, the commonality is like, I'm going to do this anyway. We might as well try to make money. And then out of it, now my wife is like, no, you need to focus. So like now I've really calmed down. I only focus on like one business, three ideas. Like that's the only way she'll, she'll let me stay in the house. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, it's just been fun like that. That's, that's really cool. I think what, what I <clears throat> really liked about that is you always have that one dude, like you're always bouncing ideas against you know each other and i have two guys like two cousins of mine that we've been in the same group chat for the past 15 years right it's the same like you can go back like what did we talk in like three years ago (laughs) right it's insane but again you know we we all grew up we all you know we all have kids now we all you know have our own homes and now we're talking about homes and talking about gardening it's like the conversation changed from technology to like housekeeping to like all these different things i'm like whoa and I really like, you know, what you said, you know, you get into one hobby and like, okay, how can I make money from that? And unfortunately, I never thought that way, even though I've been in tons of, tons of different hobbies. I'm like, I, I got this one job and I'm just going to keep doing it. But I am seeing things from a different, different um, lens lately. And I'm like, okay, I need to launch something. So this thing, the podcast has been the most consistent. And so I started a podcast with my cousins call it, we called it still brewing it in 2012. We did like four episodes and then we're like, all right, this is too hard because we were in three different 
you know, three, two different time zones. You know, I'm in Colorado. I'm, I'm up at like midnight and we're, we're having this chat or whatever. We didn't have awesome tools like Anchor or, you know, something like that. None of that. Like Zoom makes it so easy now. Like forget about it, you know. Um, yeah. It's, it's the golden time to do it. And by the way, I love the show. I love the aesthetics and everything that you're doing. Um, and it, it's, that's exactly right. Like, yeah, I did my podcast. I did one in 2007. It was called the Megan Fox podcast because I was like, I need SEO like that. <laughs> and so we just named it that. And I was like, oh, this is great. And it was, it was, but it was really hard to do it. It was on Blogspot. It, we had to do all this RSS feed foolishness and yeah. just, it was terrible. But no, yeah, that's, you've got to have people. You've got to have people that, yeah. that are real with you and they, they, I think the banter just helps you in so much in life. It does. And, um, so what know, happened, everything else works out. Yeah, absolutely. So what happened is 2012, we did four episodes and then, you know, I, I had to move um, from Colorado to Virginia. And then I was just so busy with work and I was like, all right, eventually it's going to happen. I, I, would, I would keep bringing up the idea. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge follower on, on Apple Insider and we talk about Apple technology, right? So like we're always talking about this. Why don't we just, you know, start writing articles? You know, weekly we should just just do one article. So, anyways, long story short, 2018, I finished. I finally finished reading Crush It, and then Crushing It came out, and then I listened. I I finished that book, and I was like, okay, Gary says, if you want to do something, you just gotta do it. Nobody's gonna come and give you a hand. Like, here's your podcast in the bag. You just gotta do it yourself. And it just so happens that I was helping somebody else set up their podcast, and I discovered Anchor. I'm like, what the hell? I just finished my beekeeping course. I'm just going to talk about beekeeping. So I started with talking about Queen Bee. And my friend, my friend was like, you know who Queen Bee is like, right? I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, Beyonce. <laughs> so that was my first episode. I recorded in my car. And then, so I just kept consistent at it. I just keep doing it. And now I get to talk to people like you. You know, it's, it's, it's so fun. And, you know, we get to connect on a totally deeper level because, We've had, it's like we have, we're, 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 so, we're on the same bus, right? We just haven't like talked to each other. We're just on, on our own little world. <laughs> I like that analogy. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely true. Definitely true. We're all trying to go to the same place. Yep. And I think what's really cool about, about what, what you mentioned about, you know, your wife telling you, okay, focus on one thing and you know, how you can have these ideas. And that makes it all a lot of sense too, because. And this is some new analogy I've been, come, I've been applying with time is that there's only so much butter you can put on a, on a butter knife to spread on your bread. Because by the end of the time you get to the edge, the day is over and the butter's thinning. You're, you're spreading yourself too thin. Oh, I love that. I have high cholesterol. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Sorry. We'll, no. we'll use a hummus. How about that? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, man, uh, it's really awesome talking with you. So what I like to do, you know, so we, we learned a little bit about you, Doc William, you know, digital marketing, your wavy journey, 47 jobs. This is mind blowing. Um, what are your, what are some of your motivations that you do, you know, that keep you doing what you're doing every day? I mean, I think it's overly used, but I, I think it's just because it's the truth. Like I saw an interview about like Roger Federer, and like, I guess it was Draymond Green that was, you know, uh, one of the players on Golden State. And this was towards the end of their run. They're like, how do you keep doing it? Like, how do you keep doing it? Roger Federer has been doing it like for years, like decades, just, just killing it in tennis. And he's like, well, um, you know, I, I wake up, I do a practice. I have lunch with my family. I go back out and practice. And it's just part of his life. He just loves doing it. And I, I think with this, with digital marketing, I've always been interested in products and psychology, which all marketing is. And I just love to see, I love trying to help people and see them get excited. Uh, yes, I get paid. Yes, these things. But like, honestly, I just like people being happy and I like trying to see how I can help them. And, um, and I, I try to figure out different ways. So like throughout my whole career, teaching, therapy, I, I really think it's just, a biofeedback of listening to see how people are and then going on. And um, so every day that 
like I, I tell people, I'm not joking. Like the stuff I do with like Vayner or AppSumo, like, and that's what how Build with Me, the new show. I'm not sure if I told you about that, but like, it, it's what I would do if no one was watching anyway. Like this is just, I just like Amen. doing these things. That's it. That you, you know, you you hit the nail on the head because when I first started the podcast. I did not market it. I'm like, what's marketing? I d- I'm just recording it for my own, you know, for my own self. And like, even now I'm, I really suck at marketing. Like I haven't marketed the podcast as much as I should have. Like I should be getting like hundreds of views or per day or whatever. But, and I actually got to that point back in February because I was, I was actually marketing. And then, well, the, the, the human part of me came into like, okay, how can I automate this stuff? I'm like, Oh, that, that, ship sailed but <laughs> but um you're right you know you you just got to keep doing what you love to do so tell us what what are you doing these days and you know what's your plan you, what are your goals how did you get connected with vayner media and like you you did mention that you know you were doing four jobs at a time and you were just you were just crushing it <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, I think the four jobs were crushing me, actually. I just, I yes. think it was just, it was, it was bad. But I mean, uh, so I'll take a little piece at a time. So like with, with, with Vayner, the whole thing was like throughout my entire career and whatever this is, I find that I've always just been uh, doing the counter what people would try to do. Like, so the thing is like working with ESPN and in that, I never tried to pitch ESPN. I pitched ESPNW, which is the women's side of ESPN, because I knew most people were after ESPN and getting that job. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how I ended up working with them. With Vayner, is very similar. Everyone always tries to get attention from Gary. Yeah. And I just went after talking to his brother. And so, because I knew like everyone was trying to get Gary, and I'm just like, what's the chances? I'm always looking at what are the chances of me succeeding? Right. And so with Vayner, it was like, okay, how can I bring value? How can I do something? How can I work with them? And then after the first time, it was like, okay, how can, how can there be an opportunity again? Because, you know, I was live streaming at Vayner Media in 2017 before people were live streaming, really. Yeah. And by the way, we were live streaming with three cameras. Yep. Like it, it just, you know, we were very intentional. Like that's, what we thought the future was going to be that and chatbots and like we stuck to our guns and you know it just became multiple uh ways to keep doing the same thing and then so that that was the first time and then we worked on multiple podcasts we helped with sasha group which is one of their smaller companies mm-hmm. it's a boutique agency under vayner x to build out their sops for people building their own podcasting shows so nice. it, I, i'm always about like just what are you missing and what do you need done? And I, I call it like the garbage man. Like, how can I just be the garbage man? Like, there ain't nobody, like no one wants to, I don't think children dream about being the garbage man. I don't think so. But, but like, I know if I don't have the garbage man, like I'm freaking out. I'm calling the city. I'm like, what is going on here? Yes. And, and so I, I try to be the garbage man of every company I go into. <laughs> and just like, I'm like, I'm going to be essential. I'm going to be essential where people are going to call me for things that I enjoy to do. So that's, that's how we ended up with Vayner. And, um, and you know, I'll, I'll go into the other thing afterwards. But yeah, that's how we ended up there. Nice. So what's the other thing? So this was unexpected. I've, I ran an agency, uh, a PR agency and marketing firm for a couple years. But when, when COVID happened, um, everyone was freaking out, obviously. Yeah. There's a lot mm-hmm. of stuff going on, right? I'm not saying anything. But what I kept seeing on LinkedIn over and over again, it really bothered me when I would see like seven or eight figure uh, people were like, we got to work together. We got to lean in. We'll make it together. And it got me really upset because I'm like, ain't nobody want to hear that right now. Like, first of all, I'm not in those commas. I'm not in those groups. Like, <laughs> and so it got me really irritated. I'm like, you're not teaching people. So I was like, you know what? For all these years, people always told me like, doc, you, you, you you give away the secret too much. You've got to hold back. You got to, I was like, all you people like, screw all you people. Like, I don't care. I'm going to go and create a live streaming show. I'm just going to go on YouTube and I'm going to do build with me. And I'm going to show you that I can, how to basically side hustle and make money. So I was like, I was obviously, I do a lot of content for 
uh, AppSumo and those companies. So I was like, I'm going to build three businesses every single night from one tool. And I'm going to show you live and I'm going to build it live from the beginning of the show to the end. And so, and I'm going to do it 40 days straight. So I kept adding, like adding, 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 because I was like, no one's going to top what I do. And it was in the middle of quarantine. Like I started in March and I'm like, we're going to go 40 days straight. And by doing that, that gave more PR from different companies like VaynerX jumped out because they like, because I was telling them like, I, I built out this whole system where, you know, so we did the Gary V content model 2.0 last year. And um, so Gary has a team, he has about 30 people and he puts out a lot of content. And me and my, my friend Jay, we were like, we can do it with two people. We can put out just as much content with automation in two people. You could do it with one person. And so we put that out. They saw that I was doing the live streaming thing. So they asked me to speak for their Vayner, VaynerX uh, event for live streaming and, and mm. that. And pretty much after Build With Me, that's where it took off. So the hustle and trends reached out. Um, basically all the companies I wanted to work with, they're like, this is really weird. You're doing some weird stuff. And like, and the thing was, I put a timer in the show. So you knew I wasn't faking it. Like yeah. one, of, one of my past clients, like they were, they didn't have the money. They were going to spend close to 200,000 on an app to build. And I was like, I can build this thing. And so I built it in an hour. And I was like, and I, I, I said, and I was like, I'm going to show it and show everyone online that they can do it too. I'm like, I'm not going to do like a paywall and say, you're not going to do it. I'm like, we're just going to crush it. So going that honest and just like that unfiltered, um, it was really refreshing. And then from that, I'm like, I still have my agency, but full 100,000% is into build with me and I'm building my own courses from that and, uh, and just crushing it that way. Dude, that is friggin' awesome. I love it. Uh, I've been thinking about what to do and I've been, I've been like, I've been watching, um, what's his face? Sorry. Pat, uh, Pat Flynn. Oh yeah, Pat. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, he's doing. He's doing his. 70, I think he's in day seventy-five now with his live streams, and it's just mind blowing. Like what the level of like information that is getting passed out, and what you did, like in one hour, you can build anything in one hour. That's that's so true because we have the tools available today with SaaS and with, with automation, with AI and RP, you know, all these things that you make it so easy as possible. Wow. Yeah. So you built 40 different applications, 40 different things. Um, 40 times three. So 120. Okay. 120. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So 40 business, 40 with 40 different tools, three applications each. Yeah. 120 business ideas or businesses to start and going right now and start making money. Wow. Holy smokes. But it was fun. And, and like, yeah. like, that's what I was telling people. I'm like, I literally do this every night anyway. And so I was actually shout out this guy named Max who started 100 Days of No Code. In mm -hmm. the middle of this, he was like, hey, um, and at the end of the year, my friend, because I was like, ah, no one understands me. And my friend's like, why aren't you on No Code Twitter? And I'm like, I don't know what No Code is. And he's like, it's just not when you're programming. I'm like, that's a thing? And he's like, you need to start talking to these people. And I was like, all right, whatever. So this, this kid was like, he's in, he's in England. He's like, Hey, I'm going to put this on. And, uh, I did a couple days and people were messaging me and they're like, doc, like you're putting out so much content. Like you're putting out all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, well it's, it's the, the 2.0 that I released. Like as long as you have 20 pieces of 20 minutes, I can make you 30 pieces of content all on automation without doing anything. They're like, no, you can't. I'm like, sure. No, and sure. then I was, just, I'm, yeah. And that's why I was like, from now on, I'm just going to do the show and show people I can do it. And um, yeah, it was off to the races from there. That's amazing. I, I, you're blowing my mind right now. I can't even think. <laughs> so since I can't think anymore, I'm going go to go to this session, the section of our podcast episode where I ask you questions about some of the things. And, and based on what you just told me, Still blowing my mind. Um, you've probably already done the stuff that you wanted to do, but I'm going to go into the question. What is the one hobby that you wish you got into? Ooh. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, now, what's the level of 
expert on that hobby? Is it what? Ah, that's a tough question. Um, I know. You know what? You made it tough. Yeah. <laughs> you know, ah, that's what did I want to do? There's so much. Oh, I want to do everything. Like, I think, you know what, to be honest, I, I wish I was better at languages. My wife can, can yeah, she just learned so many languages so fast. Like, I'm so bad at that. I'm so bad at that. So I would think, I wish I knew like 15 languages, honestly. I, and not only just like getting by, I wish, mm -hmm. I wish I could speak to people that I could speak to their soul and have a good conversation. Yeah. Not just, you know what I'm saying? Like not, really. That's just a surface conversation, right? Yeah. And I, I really like every time, like my, my wife was talking about, because she loves the et 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 etymology of different words and everything. So she, she, she picked a word, like I picked like innovation this year. She picked another word in another language, but she's like, this is what it means. And I'm like, man, there's just so many words in other languages. I'm like, man, I wish I could have the grasp of the vocabulary to be able to resonate with people like that. Yeah. Um, um, here's the thing about you and I, we, we resonate with technology, right? So technology is a language that other people look at it. It's like, I wish I could do that. <laughs> right. From that <laughs> perspective, we have, we have the edge on that area. But when it comes to, to languages, like I speak two languages, like Urdu, which is my I mean, from Pakistan, and I I can read and write Arabic, but I don't understand it. I mean, I understand a little bit of it, but um, <clears throat> I've I've also you know struggled. I was like, oh, I'm I'm gonna go learn Spanish. So I went you know Duolingo like two three months straight on. Like okay, I know a little bit, but I don't I don't have I don't have anybody to talk to. <laughs> right, yeah. so. You're right. Yeah, man, it's, it all comes down to time. Like we only have so much time that we can spend on. Either we spend on, you know, live streaming. Maybe, maybe that could be the next thing. You know, you spend one hour in learning a language and sure. you live stream that. Oh, man. In, in would the be next so 40 bad. days, I'm going to learn basics of 40 different languages. Oh, that would be, oh, don't. <laughs> I might write that down though. <laughs> I do love, I lo love crazy challenges. I do love crazy. I'm going to write that down. We'll see what happens. 40 is tough. 40. Is tough. I mean, you, it doesn't have to be 40. It could be 15. No, right. but like when you're saying it, like I'm like, Not I'm all right. in for the 40. I'm like, Ooh, oh, so I got to see what really I can do. Cool is, um, our good friend, Tim Ferriss. I wish he was our friend. I mean, I, I'm sure he's your friend. Tim no, Ferriss. Not. He's a friend got, of a friend. <laughs> he's got a formula on how you can learn a language really quickly by learning like 15 or like 20 different vocabulary words. Because if you look at like Spanish and English and like some of the words are very similar, like you're using the same word for, for like international is like international in every language, hmm. that kind of thing. So it makes it kind of easy. Like I'm, I'm looking at Arabic. Like pantaloon is in Spanish, right? And in in Urdu, it's patloon, right? Oh. So very similar words. So there's a lot of, I guess we like. <clears throat> if you look at from the technical level, there's a lot of similarities. But then when people are actually talking their language, they're talking so fast you can't slow it down. Yeah, man. I mean, you know what? I I like what you said. I might have to start doing that. That like. I'll give you a quick example. Like that's exactly what like, so I tried to do Russian when I was like 17 or 18 mm -hmm. and like, even like Ukrainian Russian to like in like kids, because like, so me and my friend, one of my friends was from the Ukraine mm -hmm. and I didn't understand so much slang goes into it than formal. Oh, yeah. And like, it like, I remember when we were talking and you know, it was like, Privet, like, you know, hello. And then I was talking to old people and they're like, is that with chat? Like, why are you like, I was like, ah, they're like, <laughs> they're, like, they're like, you don't talk to me like that. I was just like, oh, there's so many things. Ah, yeah. forget it. <laughs> it's, it's the culture, right? It's the culture yeah. part of it. Cause you could, you could uh, pull up Google translate and translate something, but it, it's, it's not going to come close at all. No, it's, oh, you're so right. I was, I can't remember. I was trying to explain cause we, we have, we, we are creative cloud. Like some people are in the Philippines, some are in Ukraine, some are in India. And we were trying to, he, he, I cannot remember. I had to ask my wife. Someone was, one of, someone was asking me just like this phrasing and this like slang. They're like, what is that? And I was just like, 
and I, I we had such a hard time explaining. I'm like, just don't worry about it. We're not, we're never going to use it ever again. Like that, that phrase, <laughs> like cut it out. Like it doesn't mean anything to anyone. Um, but you're, you're, you're exactly right. That's you so know, it, it reminds me of Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like, that's, it just went over it. It's like, it's, it's impossible. I have very fast reflexes. Nothing goes over my head. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly, exactly right. I'm like, technically, yes, we, we're, we're speaking, we're understanding each other, but no, no, not at all. Not at all. Like in rush hour, right? <laughs> rush hour. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. Come on, man. All right, next question. This hobby was really cool. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to bring you back on on another show. <laughs> I'm working, actually working on a game show. Um, it's gonna be, and I could probably get some ideas from you. So we'll, 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 we'll talk about on. this. I love game right. shows. <laughs> what did you want to be when you were a child? Oh, that kind of depends the age. Um, did I give you these answers beforehand? Hopefully I did. I, was like, wait a minute. I, no, I don't have these specific. <laughs> so I was like, wait a minute. I'm really sure. I'm, I'm like, hopefully he's not reading because I'm like, I I'm don't think I'm those. giving. No, no, no. I'm like, I'm not giving him any of the same answers. I, I don't just think get, that's just to get you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I did. Um, to, to, okay, to be honest with you um probably probably a jedi or a ninja like i just i can't remember a time when i didn't want to be both of those things um it was never real jobs i'll tell you this right now like yeah. <laughs> i never Absolutely. wanted a real job i just okay so the first one i wanted i wanted to be a mutant i wanted to have powers whatever the next part was, I was like, I want to be in a robe and I want to be comfortable, Jedi. And then I was like, I just want to be sneaking around all the time, Ninja. And so that, that's pretty much, that's tough. But it was always, it was an amorphous, it was just constantly changing between those three. You're basically Mystique. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. I love that. If we're talking about, listen, Mystique, and there's a very, I think it's coming out in the newest movie, maybe in Black, whatever. I love this one character, Taskmaster, where oh, yes. the mutant could just emulate and see what someone was doing and then redo it. I love that. Oh, I was like, why man. are people not talking about Taskmaster? More? That is so cool. And is is uh, what's his what's his cat? What's his name from? Um, I, it's escaping my Stranger Things. Mm. Is a dude? Is he playing Taskmaster? Yes, that's the. Exact, I was like, wait a minute, I know this coming. Yep, exactly. He played Hellboy pretty good at the yeah. End, the new this, this guy is coming out of the woodwork, just doing whatever. But yeah, amazing. Yeah, I think he. I'm ninety eight percent sure. I <laughs> but this is another problem too. I didn't want to spoil the movie, so I didn't want a lot to know. Like my wife was like, you know this character, and I'm like, ah, I think don't tell me anymore. So like, I'm pretty <laughs> sure, but I can't. I don't know for sure. Okay. We'll, we'll wait for that surprise. Yeah. All right. Next one. So we talked about movies, and and that's what happens when you talk about being a child. You know. So oh yeah. What is your favorite movie or TV show? Ooh. Okay. So this is interesting. So my favorite like go to movie that I think I have the most like pop culture references and everything. I always love the the second act of trilogies. I've mm -hmm. always loved them. So. Empire Strikes Back has been my favorite. Mm -hmm. Dark Knight was my favorite. There, there are a few random crazy films mm -hmm. um, that have been from my childhood, like um, Back to the Future, but also a very obscure movie called Buckaroo Banzai that my father loved, who yeah. like, it was just a crazy, crazy film. Um, there is a movie that, um, oh man, it throws me off, Harvey. It's an old movie. It's probably the 30s with Jimmy Stewart. Mm -hmm. um, I, and then there's something called The Ruling Class, which um, the same actor that played in Lawrence Arabia, Arabia did this mm -hmm. other really crazy, crazy film called, um, yeah, The Ruling Class, uh, where he starts thinking that he's uh, the Messiah and Jesus. And then it turns out that he goes into electric shock therapy and his name's Jack and he thinks he's Jack the Ripper by the end of the film. Oh wow! It's a crazy, crazy, and it's a musical. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's crazy. So anyway, 
Um, so yeah. So when my wife was asking me, she's like, what should I put down here? I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I would probably go with empire strikes back. Okay. That's probably what I would do. TV show. Most influential as a child, I would probably go with Star Trek, probably next generation. My favorite is probably when sci-fi channel came back with Battlestar Galactica for three mm. years. I, I really think that was a really good run. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I would say. Nice. I like it. I like it. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is that <clears throat> everybody knows the origin story. What happens after that is what you like. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. would you say Iron Man 2 is better than Iron Man 1? <laughs> oh, that, 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 I would never <laughs> say that. I would never say that. Don't put me in that box. I know. <laughs> I loved all the Iron Man. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, the first that. one was so good, though. The first so one was good. I. I put that movie on just to watch him tinkering with that suit. Yeah. Like yeah. my favorite. Like my favorite thing is to how do you how do you put things together? Like that's my favorite thing. Like anytime you're putting things together, you you're like working all parts of your brain, the creative, the analytic, and, and you know it's it's awesome. Yeah, no, that's my wife's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. What movie would you choose if you had to play a character in it? Ooh, probably. Mm, that's tough. A movie, a play, okay. Probably Neo. Probably the Matrix. I hate to be like that. And I know everyone's going to be like, I can't believe you just said that. But um, the Matrix, like, I just remember when I saw the Matrix and I just, like, lost my mind. Um, that was, it would be good. I think that's the main one. And um, I, I, I couldn't be Luke. I couldn't be Anakin. Like, that couldn't work. Thor, you can't. I'm going to have to go with Neo. I'm going to have to go with Neo. I'm done. I can't I like, do anymore. I, I like your answer. Hold on. I'm going to um, hand my phone over to my kid so he can go down to his scouts. Where's my, where's my uh, <laughs> no problem. I need a deflated balloon. I don't have a deflated balloon. Here's, here to go. Here's a Zoom call. He's building everything. <laughs> what, is he, what is he building over there? Deflated balloon? I've heard of a balloon, but what do you need a deflated balloon for? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's very specific. <laughs> Inflated. Oh my God, my daughter. Like, All right. Um, last question. If you are a board game, what would it be? Oh, that's a trick question. I'm just going to be honest with you. That's a trick question because <laughs> if anyone knows me, I'm terrible at board games. And I've just, I'm going to have to go with like, if I was a boy, you know what? I'm gonna go with that obscure, like I've seen Uno, but like that weird Uno game that just like spits random cards out, and you're like, well, I thought I was playing Uno, but what is this crap? Like, oh man, that's a good one. I'll have to look that one up. I'm pretty. I think I would have to be like that because okay. Monopoly not gonna happen. Clue not gonna happen. Maybe Hungry Hungry Hippos. Not. I don't. I mean, you know, I would do that. The the life is too depressing. I'm it gonna is. go with that crazy Uno game. All right, sounds good. All right, where can my my where can my audience find you? <laughs> no, worries. yeah, find me, find me anywhere. So, um, if you go to uh, build with doc, build with doc, doc com, check me out. That's where all the build it um episodes are. You know, uh, build with me, where I build every single night. That's great. Find me on Twitter underscore doc Williams. And if you want to hear more about the craziness for our marketing, brandfactoryinc dot com, you can find me there. Dude, I love it. Thank you so much. I can't wait to talk to you more, man. <laughs> Likewise, man. This was fun. I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today.